and tell us a little bit how about how you got to Lancaster. Okay. I am Stephen Alton Murray. I was born September 29th, 1950 in Daytona Beach, Florida. My father was a career uh, worker for the United States Post Office as a fraud investigator, um, starting out in rural southern Georgia, which is where both of my parents were born and raised. Um, he was, when Franklin Roosevelt came into office, all of these WPA projects started up and they started mail delivery um, instead of having to go down to the train station where the mail sacks were thrown off the trains every day. He became a, a mailman and then went on, went on to be a fraud investigator um, and wound up um, a couple of notches down from the Postmaster General in Washington, D.C., and he was even commended by President Kennedy for outstanding work that he did. My mom was the traditional stay-at-home mom. She made the pancakes and put the band-aids on the knees. Um, she taught school. I have a, quite a lot of teachers in my family. So when I was a baby, we moved up from Daytona to um, right outside of Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, Towson, just north of Baltimore, was where I grew up. I wound up going to the University of Maryland outside of Washington, D.C. Um, I started in 1968, one of the most tumultuous years in America's history. Um, the assassinations of Bobby Kennedy, Martin Luther King, the demonstrations at the Democratic National Convention in Chicago, and the election of Richard Nixon for the first time. Um, our campus at the University of Maryland was very politically active um, during the Vietnam years. And since we were only a stone's throw north of the Washington, D.C. line, anybody who was anybody in the anti-war movement, Abby Hoffman, Rennie Davis, Tom Hayden, Jane Fonda, the Berrigan brothers, everybody came to our school first before they went down to give speeches down at the mall at Washington, D.C. And also, all the kids who hitchhiked from across the nation to go to the demonstrations in D.C. Of course, this was all pre-internet and pre-cell phone, but word, we sent the word out that they could come to our campus. We were 35,000 undergraduates. Um, and those of us living in the dorm rooms would give up our beds and sleep on the floor and let the guy who had hitchhiked from Idaho to come to the demonstration would sleep in our beds so he'd get a good night's rest that night so he'd be strong for the demonstration the next day. So this was, I mean, my very first day there at night, there was a free concert with Country Joe and the Fish singing one, two, three, what are you fighting for? Don't ask me, I don't give a damn. Next stop is Vietnam. So I, I had heard of that song. I had never heard it. But there's Country Joe singing, and then after Country Joe came Frank Zappa. So, I mean, I was thrown right into the deep end of the counterculture, uh, which I already sort of had my fingers on the pulse of it, but living in suburban um, Baltimore is a totally different thing than being around 35,000 other kids growing their hair long and um, waving the peace signs and all of that kind of stuff. So between Berkeley, uh, Columbia University, the University of Wisconsin at, at Madison, um, we were right there. The University of Maryland was right there with being one of the most active campuses in the whole United States with anti-war sentiment. The Summer of Love was 1967. Um, 68, like I said, was when I started school. 69 was Woodstock. Um, so that whole tidal wave of the counterculture movement, I was smack dab in the middle of it. We had a, a small little shopping area located next to the campus of old stores that had been built in the 20s or 30s, and there was the really cool record store, there was the uh, really cool boutique where the girls could wear all, buy all the gauzy hippie skirts. Um, 
that was the head shop, that was the cool organic place to get organic food. You know, there was this whole entrepreneurship of young counterculture radicals, let's say, who had set up all of these businesses. So I started working part time in some of these places. So I got first taste of like what all of this was and all of these people coming in and hey man and you know that you go into the demonstration and you know like all of that kind of stuff I was right there with all of that and so it was not only the anti-war sentiment dragging me into it pulling me into it to become politically active but also the my generation uh, of the baby boomers the huge lump sum that we were, were making a tremendous impact upon society uh, culturally. So um, I feel that, that was, those were my formative years, and those, those years taught me a lot about society, about government, about entrepreneurship, about the fact that you didn't have to go sell insurance. <laughs>